All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today we're going to take a look at one of the plays, uh, Georgia touchdowns for the national championship game the other night. And what I'm going to basically discuss is, is it the scheme? Is it the execution? Is it a bust? What the issue is and, and how sometimes as coaches we need to kind of figure out what it is schematically that, that is giving us issues and what it is that is not the scheme, but it's just a bust and something we were supposed to do. All right, so make sure you... Check out some of our partners, Game Strat, Sideline Replay, excuse me, system that we use. All right, highly reliable, highly affordable. Tons of teams are making the switch to Game Strat. We use it at Bishop Kenny High School. I used it at my previous high school as a head coach. Absolutely love the system, and I love the fact that the technical support is so good. You can get those guys on the phone on a Friday afternoon if you're having problems, so make sure you check out Game Strat. Don't. The headwear company we use at Bishop Kenny High School, Play Fast Football. Online hat builder, completely customizable. You design your own hat any way you want to design it. Colors, styles, enclosures on the back, embroidery. All right, you can put words on there, logos. You design the hat. Every hat has a story. Make sure you let Dome tell the story of your hat. Baker Sporting Goods, company we use for our spirit packs. Our uniforms are distributed from them or through them. Uh, our sideline gear is through them. We have sites for teachers and coaches to buy things online and fans to buy things online. So you can really streamline the experience of your team gear all in one, sp in one spot. So check that out. Just Play is the playbook software we use at Bishop Kenny High School. I also use it on my Patreon site. Um, it's the best play drawing tool on the market, in my opinion. It's also a very unique way to teach and deliver information to your players, and you can figure out what they are grasping because they have some really good quiz features where you can use images or videos, ask questions, get responses. It's really, uh, really easy to use, a very simple way of defining what your kids actually know. So uh, I'm set to speak in February at the uh, Nike Coach of the Year, and I will be presenting with Just Play because, for me, it's the best tool out there. All right, Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Thousands of reps. Don't need a partner. Elbows in, thumbs up. Where should my eyes be? What should my hips be doing? Different coil tensions that change as kids get stronger, so you can change the coil to make it harder to lev the pad in. All right, all set up in your weight room, or you can find a way to anchor them out on the field. In season, off season, striking development. All right, don't need a partner. Easy to clean, easy to use. Make sure you check out Difference USA. All right, so the other night, Stetson Bennett had a touchdown run. I guess it was the first touchdown maybe of the game. All right, it was basically midline, zone read, however you want to look at it. All right, the neat thing about it to me was the scheme of it was well thought out for two reasons, in my opinion, because we play a similar defense. All right, by getting into slot, tray, Y off, however you want to look at that formation, they kept the middle safety front side by leaving the tight end front side. Right, so if it was a split zone theory with the tight end going back, they probably would have added helmets to the party. All right, but by keeping the tight end front side, that kind of occupied the middle safety and kept him on the front side of the fit. Okay, so it was three by one, it was Y off, uh, however you define that formation, right? And TCU was basically in uh, the shade front to where the four eye was to the back. I'm, I'm pretty sure it wasn't tight the whole way across, but even if it was, it's the same scenario. All right, so, you know, what they did was they ran midline zone read, however you want to look at it, okay? They arced the backside four eye to get out to the overhang to the single side. All right, they ended up stalking the corner. Maybe they had uh, an access or a gift on, and then once the ball was pulled, he blocked. But as Stetson Bennett's going into the end zone, you could see the receiver blocking the corner, so he was definitely stalking. All right, and then they read the four eye. They left the four eye alone. The guard went with the nose up to the will. All right, in the clip, the will went over the top, which was part of the issue that I'll get to. The will went over the top, so they had that combination there. Combination up to the mic, out to the Sam, okay, or up to the middle safety, possibly read the SAM, RPL the SAM, however you want to look at it. They, the set and the formation and the blocking scheme kept the middle safety for TCU in a three high structure on the front side. Okay, the pull and Stetson Bennett happened there, right? Well, two things happened in my opinion. Okay, so you can look at the play from Georgia and say, hey, that's a great play versus that front with the four eye there, midline, awesome, put him in a real bind, maybe. Okay, what happened was the four eye 
became a surf player, squeeze and pop player. So when the four eye was unblocked, he tightened down the line, okay, and the will ran over the top. So within that scheme, okay, the four eye is probably supposed to be the quarterback player, and the will is adding himself over the top, which means he's playing the dive component of the play. Okay, just based on, on, on how it played out, the way it worked out, the four eye served. Okay, well, a couple issues here. And here's where the scheme is really good for Georgia. A lot of people don't talk to the three or the four eye about being red. All right, if you don't see a ton of midline or you don't see those theories, you talk to your ends in, in an even front or your outside backers coming off the edge, you talk to them all day about surfing, mesh charging, high walling the quarterback, however, whatever your terminology is. You talk to them all the time, but you rarely talk to the four eyes about being red and what are you going to do if you're unblocked. Now, you may talk to them about, depending on what you read, like for us in four eyes, we read guards. We don't read tackles. So if a guard is down for us, we're going to squeeze because we're trying to avoid trap. Okay, but to me, if you're going to squeeze, then you should probably play the dive. And if you play the dive, then the wheels should stack track, fall back to play the quarterback. Okay, by surfing the four eye, who is nowhere near as athletic usually as a five technique, and he's a full gap further inside. So now by the time the four eye surfs, he's almost in the A gap. So an athletic quarterback, even if that, and I believe the TCU kid was relatively square to the line of scrimmage, didn't turn his shoulders and chase, he was relatively square, but by the time the ball got pulled and he reacts, he's not athletic enough and he's too far removed to play the quarterback, right? So the numbers worked out to where the will was on the front side of the fit, with the middle safety on the front side of the fit, four eyes surfed, quarterback pulled, they arced to the overhang, all right, and got themselves a great play and a touchdown. Great scheme for Georgia, all right? My opinion, though, busted on the TCU side. The four eyes shouldn't be a surf player, I don't think. I think the four eyes should be a chase player. And now, if you're playing this theory in a 3-2 box, to me, the will, if the back is to me, I'm going to fall back C unless a puller takes me over the top. So for me, the way I would look at it with, with our backers, if... Right now, the way I would teach it to our kids is I would think that the Mike's going to end up being an A-gap player and the Will's going to end up being a fallback C-gap player. All right, stack, track, fall back. He, yes, he could stack the back, and if the ball didn't go there, he could add on. But really, in theory, you don't need him there. Okay, so unless we got flat, fast, bash, outside, or a puller. All right, a puller would then switch the theory, and I would think the Will would become an A-gap player and the Mike would become a C-gap player. Fast flow, so if the back was up and flat, okay, so the back's to me, I'm thinking about being in the C. The back's away, I'm thinking about playing the A. Well, if at the snap of the ball, the back goes full speed across the quarterback's face like that, it's just going to flip it. The Mike will go to the C and the Will will go to the A because of the flow, or if there was a puller. But in a setting where the back is a little bit deeper, and he's to me, unless something gets me out of my fit, if the back is inside vertical and there's no pullers, I'm probably going to be to the C. The back's to me, I'm going to play to the C. So now, the four eye could squeeze, chase, the will could stack, track, fall back, the tackle can only block the overhang, and now the will's there to play the quarterback on the pull. Or, if you're going to let the will run over the top, all right, depending on what your fits are, okay, again, to me, there's nowhere, if there's no pullers, if the nose lags the backside A and the mic fits the front side A, all right, and the five or the four I takes care of the B, all right, and then you've got the edge defender and the middle safety in the alley, okay, where is the gap for the will to play with no pullers? There really is no gap for him to play. Now, I get it. If the ball shows there and bounces that way, you don't need him backside if nothing shows there. Okay, I, I totally understand that. But now the ball got pulled, and you had a surf player and a runner. Okay, so you, you just have to think about it that way. You've got somebody surfing for the cue from a four-eye who's a gap further inside 
than a five technique would be. If you really wanted the will to be involved in the fit front side, then the four eye probably should have been either a mess charge or an up the field player, all right, to where he can play the quarterback athletically and leverage wise. Because as a four eye being inside, if he squeezes at all, he's never going to be able to play the quarterback, all right, on runs that are going outside. It didn't. They didn't run midline keep through there. They ran a midline theory where they read the four eye, but the ball made its way back out to the perimeter where the tackle was arc releasing for the down safety, right? So to me, if the four eye is going to be, all right, that flat player trying not to get trapped if he's unblocked, then I would think the will should be a fallback to the C-gap player because there's nowhere for the will to go. The four eye has just essentially taken the B gap to A gap away, so the ball can't go there. All right, the Mike's got the front side A, we've got the front side B, C, D handled, there's nowhere for the will to go. Okay, so again, was that TCU scheme can't hang versus that play? Is it Georgia drew up a, an unbelievable beater? Yeah, it was a great play. Yeah, it's a good theory, but I think it's a bust on TCU's part, right? If you looked at the same theory in an even front world, Right? Like we said, like I talked about yesterday, every scheme has flaws. So to sit there and say that TCU gave up X amount of points, got blown out, that defense doesn't work, no, I don't think that's a good argument. All right? I don't think that's a good argument. Because if you were in a world of however you wanted to do it, like wherever you, let's say you had the three techniques set to, to the Y offside, and you had the open B gap back here, all right? you had a Mike and a Will in the box, Sam out there, corner, Left safety, your right safety now maybe has to poach three vertical because of that right there, corner back there. Well, if you got the same theory, and it wouldn't be a midline theory, but if you got the same theory where it was, all right, some type of zone read theory there, okay? And again, not arc release because of the front, zone read theory, backside safety, borrow to the front, playing poach off of that, trying to keep him over there. All right, again, not the exact same schematics, but what I want to show you is if you are a chase replace team, all right, so if you are a chase the dive, replace with the will, okay, first of all, you're doing it from a five technique, all right, so will take him a little bit longer to chase, but he should be able to at least close the backside B gap because that's really all he needs to do. You'd love him to elicit a pull into, all right, a replace player, right, into a scrape player, into, all right, the, the, the chase replace theory, and hopefully that when that happens, the tackle, what usually ends up happening in this game is the tackle will sift, so he'll kind of seal inside the end, he'll sift technique, and then he'll turn out on the wheel, and the keep will end up going inside vertical more, that's what zone, you know, zone read teams have to figure out with the scape, you know, scrape exchange or anything else, but if you were surfing this with the five technique, that means you want the will to somehow be, all right, either in the B gap there, or if there was a pull or anything else, you'd want him in the fit somewhere because that's gonna be your surf quarterback player. Well, if the surf player either chases or can't play the quarterback on the pull and the will fits inside and is blocked by Let's just say the will fits downhill and is blocked by the tackle there. Well, you're in the same issue that TCU was with the 4 eye. Your surf player couldn't handle the quarterback. You tied your will to a different fit because of the surf technique. All right, so to me, it's more of a bust of both guys have to understand the theory. The surf player has to be able to play the quarterback if the player behind him is fitting a different gap theory, however you want to look at it, right? So if there's an inside component and there's an outside component, if the player on the outside component doesn't do his job, okay, it's not necessarily the scheme bust. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not necessarily the scheme problem. It's a bust, right? So it was the same thing in TCU's tight front world. If the surf player doesn't play the QB, now it makes it look like the will linebacker is completely wrong for being over the top or in the fit or wherever he went. And this is, was number 57 for TCU, and everybody that commented, I said the same thing. Why is he way over there when 
he should have been back there. But if the four eyes serves for the quarterback, then the will doesn't need to be back there. All right? So to me, there's a bust on, on two issues. The serve player doesn't play the quarterback, all right, and you're using the will in the fit, and now the serve player doesn't play the quarterback. So we've got two, two guys there that look like they're doing the wrong thing. To me, the four eye might have been the one. He's got to play the quarterback. He either served too far inside because he's a four eye, or he overestimated Stetson Bennett's ability to keep the ball and run, which he shouldn't have, but he's a four eye. As soon as he squeezes, he's in the A gap almost. How's he going to play keeps? On the backside. Well, if your chase player chases and your replace player doesn't go over the top, it's not a scheme issue, all right? It's a bust on your part. Okay, the scheme is solid until they start turning back out on the wheel, but then you're also possibly going to gain, all right, the backside poach safety unless they were to go some type of vertical pipe to eat him up so they can't get him back in the run fit. Right, because if you're barring them over there, that's the idea. But again, to me, it's not so much the scheme. Every scheme has a chance to work if taught correctly. So if the scheme in an even in an even front open B gap is chase replace, well, if you don't chase the dive and the dive hits, you're going to ask why is the will running out of there and 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 the zone is rifling right up the middle. Well, if the will thought the five technique was going to close the B gap and and take the dive or the inside component and he was veer reading it or, or scrape exchanging it, he's not wrong, okay? Or if the surf player thought that he was gonna surf and play the quarterback and the will exchanged, okay, and this thing ripped right up the middle, it's not the scheme, it's the execution, it's a bust. One of the two guys didn't do it. And we could probably look at most, you know, almost every film you look at when you break it down as a coach, you can probably go back and say, hey, look, we busted that, we busted that. We bu yeah, I get it. It's about execution. But what's going to happen now from this game is you're going to have a lot of people looking at the scheme that TCU played, and you're going to have a lot of people asking, can that defense win a national championship? Can it hold up? Can it?" Well, I don't know if that was the right setting to ask that question because I don't know what scheme they could have played that would have held up. The two rosters, to me, were a little bit different. And that's the world we live in in high school. Our rosters tend to be different 70 80 percent of the time so as a coach the hardest part is always going to be figuring out is it our scheme or is it our ability to execute our scheme on that play that i showed you with the midline versus the four eye and the three high world i think it was the ability to execute the scheme if the four eye truly is a surf player and he does it he's already in the b gap he can't really surf too much further otherwise he's in the a gap and he can't play the quarterback which is what happened all right if he is a mess charge or a outside component player, now the will can be part of the fit. You don't need him because quarterback won't pull the ball. He's going to give the ball. So somewhere in that scheme, nicely drawn up play, midline theory to the four eye, arc release the tackle to the overhang. Okay, great theory. Keep the middle safety front side with three by one, Y off, tray, slot. Great theory, great drawing, excellent. To me, it was a bust on TCU's part, more so than it was the scheme of what Georgia did. Okay, so that's always going to be the toughest part for us as coaches. Is it our scheme? Is it the execution? Is that something that no matter how we fit it, we're dead there, we're short a number, we're short a guy, we're short in coverage. Every time they run that route and that coverage, we are just completely spent. All right, can't handle it. That's a scheme deal. If it's a bust and you say, no, we should have been good there, he should have played the cue, the will's there, the middle safety's there, we're good everywhere, all right, the ball should have been given to that zone play and the zone had nowhere to go. That's where you got to be able to look at it as a coach and say, okay, which is the issue? And this time of year, that's what we're all doing, right? We're all looking at our scheme and saying, okay, based on our kids, who we play, is this good enough for us? Well, the tough part is in the losses, and any of the losses that might have been a little bit lopsided, like the national championship game, you've got to make a, you know, a real real or take a real real long look at yourself and say can we play with this scheme and make some wrinkles or is this scheme not good well TCU got to the national stage they got to the national championship game they got in the big 12 championship game they were undefeated all the way through the season you want to risk changing that what got you there just because of the result in a game that I think 
the rosters might have been a little bit different. Just an opinion, completely an opinion. So that'll be interesting to see what, um, obviously you're going to hear all the talk about 3-3, 3-3 stack. Um, that personnel group can't hang, it can't hang. The funny thing to me was it looked like Georgia was throwing the ball at will against five secondary players. I mean, yeah, they ran the ball, yeah, they did, but early in the game it looked to me like they were throwing it where they wanted to, when they wanted to, against a scheme that everybody, or at least in the social media world, or all the you know, football junkies out there would say, well, they're probably going to get it run down their throat if they're going to stay in that stack defense and their 3-3 personnel. Well, they got in that personnel, and Georgia threw it all over them too. So um, I don't think it's the scheme. I think the scheme is very much a part of why TCU was successful. Maybe it's a style of football, and that scheme versus certain teams, SEC teams, Big Ten teams, maybe it isn't as good. Found a way to win versus Michigan, so you can't really say that, although they gave up a bunch of points. Um, I think they're going to have to take, you know, Sonny Dykes will have to take a hard look, and Joe Gillespie will have to take a hard look at, all right, undefeated, got us here, good for our conference, can we beat the big boys with this team? Because you're not going to get to a national championship and change. You're going to have wrinkles, you're going to have maybe personnel groupings, but you're not going to change. So, just an interesting debate, uh, was on YouTube Live last night, people had some really good things to say about it in the comments, and are we, do we have the right system, are we picking the right teams, is it most deserving, or best teams? That argument's going to go on forever. I don't know if any of us is right or wrong, and I don't have a vote in it. So regardless of what my opinion is, college football playoffs aren't changing for me. So um, it's good for football. It's good to have talk. It was good to have different blood. It was good to have a different fan base involved. The problem is the game got so lopsided that you lost 17 to 18 million viewers by the middle of the third quarter. Is that good for TV, good for football, or would a game, whoever it was, you know, to me, a game, whether it's – if TCU was in it the whole way, it would have been great for football. New fan base, new blood, not the same game we always get, right? That would have been great. But because it's not the same game we always get, and it's not your traditional teams that everybody's sick of seeing, well, 18, 18 million people turned the game off because it was a blowout. So, again, uh, I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think it's their choice in college football, what they want to do. Congrats to TCU on an amazing year. Congrats to Georgia. Even as an Alabama fan, it pains me to say it, but congrats to Georgia on back-to-back -back national championship seasons and probably putting yourself um, in the top seat right now for who everybody's chasing. I uh, hope you guys had fun watching that championship game. Hope this video helps you a little bit understand where uh, it may be schematic and it may be just a bust or how you play it. Hopefully it helps you understand how I think TCU should have played it on that down with a four-eye. I don't think the four-eye should be a quarterback player, in my opinion, because when he surfs like that, He's already a gap removed from a five technique. He's not as athletic as a five technique. So in the read scheme or in the read world, four eye probably needs to be a chase player and let the will or somebody else or the middle safety, depending on how you fit things, let them play the quarterback on the back end. It's a better athlete on their athlete. I think a better fit structurally. Maybe it was supposed to happen that way and the kids just didn't do it. I don't know. I'm not there. I'm not coaching. They're in a national championship game. I'm still coaching high school football. So... Who's to say? But hopefully this video helps you again. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button. Turn those notifications on so every time you ring that bell and you turn it on, you know when we go on YouTube Live randomly like last night, you know when I do a new video. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like it or don't like it. As always, leave a comment and I will respond uh, to your comment and try and have some interaction with you. Even if you don't agree or like what was done, I still try to have some interaction. That's what we do, why we do it. All right, everybody at the AFCA, thanks for being out there. Uh, appreciated seeing everybody there and all the business, businesses that were there. Uh, hope your New Year's off to a great start. Thank you for everything you do for me. But as always, remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you next time.